Well, with everyone, this is Matt Merzik. This will be a uh, work in progress, I think, number six on Aquaman. So, uh, it's been about a week since I've done anything. Christmas is over. Uh, so, I hope everyone had a good holidays. A um, couple days will be New Year's. Hopefully, 2021 will be better. But, uh, so, this work in progress is going to be on the seahorse. So, um, the first thing I did on this, uh, which I didn't videotape, is I gave it a bath. I sprayed some Krylon gray primer, real light. And then I went back on, back over it with um, uh, Mr. Surfer Sir. I had a, a spray can of Mr. Surfer Sir uh, 1000 White, and I just kind of misted that on here just to brighten it up a little bit. So looking at reference photos for seahorses, um, it's really interesting. There's not a whole lot of difference between some of these. Um, so I picked out two images that I'm going to use as my reference. Let me pull them up and show them to you. So the first one I pulled up is this guy right here. Now it's kind of not very exciting it's pretty much all orange and then the next one I picked up is this guy so I kind of think I might use this as a reference he's gonna be on the orange side but I think mate I'm not sure what this species eat what this species is but I'm kind of I like the I like the little dots and everything on them and I like the kind of stripes going through them so um, so this is kind of reddish orange orange through the body a little bit of red on the top and then his nose goes a little dark so I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to base coat this in an orange. Um, and I think for that first color, I'm going to use garagekits.us um, orange rust. So I've got this mounted on the block here. It's actually screwed into the back of a horse. So in order to get underneath the neck, I've got to pick up my contraption and flip them over. But that's not the end of the world. So this is garagekits.us orange rust. We'll see how this goes on. I'm not going to really, really worry about getting 100% opacity because there's a lot of, again, translucent kind of tones going on here. So I'm just going to back off and miss this on the whole thing. And we'll have to flip them upside down to get underneath. Um, get underneath like a little fuzzy in here when I have laying on the workbench. So if you want to know, some, uh, I had a comment on one of my videos to list all the colors and supplies I use. And my reply was simply, it, it would take forever to list everything. So, and unfortunately he doesn't uh, speak English or understand English very well. So this is what I'm using for this color. It's garagekiss.us uh, orange rust number 384. So, um, cause sometimes I, I do things off camera that I don't videotape little things and, um, and I just, it's because it's just kind of me thinking through a process. So sometimes I don't videotape like 100% of everything I do, but you get probably, you know, I would say a good 80 to 90% of if I'm doing a video, you're going to see 80 to 90% of what I do. So again, these really aren't um, step by step instructions. These are just kind of little guides on how I do things. I see a little snap hoot here I want to fix. It looks like the very tip of this, just the very, very tip of this horn broke off. So I'm going to just round it over to match the others. There we go. Just like that. I think like just the very, like the first millimeter that must have gotten hooked on something. So I'm just going to round it over. You're not going to be able to tell a difference. So this is a really good base tone for the kind of look I'm going for. Again, the photo I'm using is just a reference. It's not, I'm not going to try to replicate it 100%. It's just going to give, give me an idea of color placement and some patterns. Uh, the production paint on these guys is kind of a, a tan. Um, 
which I did see a lot of tan seahorses, but I kind of want to do something a little bit brighter, a little more colorful. over to get the underside underside of the chin and stuff no big deal <laughs> I keep running into things I'm gonna take uh, give me one second I'm just gonna take this towel off my workbench I had this down when I was um, getting them mounted onto this wood. I need to put my, my airbrush right. I'm just uh, got done cleaning out my airbrush, so I'm gonna make sure I this around now. Okay, now I can swim around without hitting anything. Again, just kind of want an even coat of this. I, my goal was to get this done before the new year, but that's not going to happen. i just been kind of taking it easy this past week with Christmas and family and stuff. And so I haven't painted it since before Christmas. All right, so I'm gonna continue to do, do this and I'll come back when I'm done, because this might take me a few minutes. All right, so I got that all base coated. It looks really good. So now what I'm doing is I'm gonna go and start darkening some of these areas, um, like on the nose and the top of the head here and some of these other areas. I've got in my airbrush right now, uh, garagekiss.us colors, transparent scar red. So this red has got a little bit of uh, orange in it. So this is a really good color to use on this, for this step, I think. So like, uh, according to my reference, like the top of the nose here is pretty dark. So I'm just going to, again, these are transparent, so you got to really slowly build them up. And this may be a really good color for doing some shading too, in general. So it goes up to right about to the eyes, as far as... Uh, this dark part. I like to keep a paper towel handy so I can make sure I'm still spraying color. Sometimes it's hard to see. Again, I got very little paint coming out. These, these will pull up on you pretty quick. I am going to hit the bottom side just a little bit. And I'll have to flip them over here in a second, but... All the little white dots will be the very last step because they're pure white. See there how it's getting a little dark on top. And then it fades, it gets a little, got a little bit of color on this side, on the bottom side, but not nearly as much. And 
think it's pretty dark around the eyes, so we're going to come in there. Oops, I put too much on in that pool. Right there. I got a little bit. Let's just go there with a Q-tip and kind of get rid of that. Again, my picture is just, just a kind of a reference. I'm trying to match it exactly. I'm just coming in here, shaping the eye and around the eye. Oops, dang it. I got a big old splat of paint. Getting dry tip, so that's my problem. There we go. So I'll probably just show you a little bit of this on camera because again I got a lot of, of this to do. Um, if I change colors I'll come back and show you but um, This is a good practice for doing the dragon as far as some techniques and stuff. The sea serpent. It's starting to look like something. So I'm going to continue to do this uh, for a little while and I'll come back and show you, show you what I got. Okay, so I've been working on this for about, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes, and I think the head's looking pretty damn good compared to what I'm doing for my, using it as my reference. Um, so I'm go back and look at it. Yeah, we're looking pretty good. So the top of the nose is real dark. It kind of fades down to below here, dark around the eyes. Did some shading in here. Um, again, I'm just using this as kind of as a, as, a, as a reference. I'm not trying to replicate this exactly. Uh, looks like I should maybe change to a different color. Uh, let's see what I got. I'm gonna dump this out real quick. Clean out my airbrush a little bit.
Because under my reference, the, what's, the head is pretty dark compared to the rest of the body. Okay, so the rest of the body is a little brighter in color. There are a few little spots of uh, darker red on the kind of like on these tips of these horns. So we may go back and do that a little bit later. But I think I'm happy with the head for now. Um, let me get my other reference. Yeah, it's all pretty much one color. So what I think I may do now is go in and do these kind of white little striped areas. It's kind of like tan areas right here on the head and along and the this sculpt comes down to right about here on my reference so um if I actually count these little spikes one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven yeah so one two one two three four five six right about here is where it cuts off so I'll do um let's see what I got I think it's some semi-transparent bone white and then I'll mist on some orange on top of that probably. So let me see what this looks like. Okay. If I don't like it, I can always go back and put the orange back on. One, two, three. One, two, three. So on this, it's kind of a... Just kind of random caps here. It's kind of like right in the middle of this. Right about there, and then I got another little I'm just gonna come in here and do this and then come back in with the orange I used and define the shape a little bit more. And then I'll bury it underneath some clear color. To it. Let's make it a little bright, but we'll knock it down. And there's some white patches here.
these have some white around them. Just real white. This is probably a little bright right now, but we'll knock it down here in a little bit. This is a semi-transparent, so I'll see the orange through it a little bit. orange spots on this I'll go in and put the trim upside down to get upside down to get this part Just kind of looking at my reference here and kind of follow the pattern a little bit So I'm going to continue to do this with the white and I'll show you what I got when I come back. Okay, so I went around, I did the white, I did some modeling here and there just based on the reference I did. I see, so I'm, uh, I'm kind of going here just kind of doing like little splotches of this uh, in some of these areas. I'm going to go back over this here in a second with some clear orange. But um, again, I kind of got my stripes going on. The, the top of the head looks like it's got a little bit of whitish tan on it, so I did that. I highlighted the crown, the, the tips of these horns a little bit. Uh, so now I'm going to go in here with some, um, I'm going to find a clear orange I like and kind of go back and bury some of this. Again, lots of back and forth, back and forth. The head is pretty much where I want it, I think. I may hit, miss some clear orange on top of that just to get all the blend. And then once I'm happy with uh, kind of how this area looks. I'll go back in and I'll add some shadows with that clear red again. So for clear orange, let's see what I got here. What is this? Orange tint. This might be the perfect ghost tint. Let's see. This is probably a nice bright orange. This is a Badger Ghost Tint Orange. Just kind of knocks some of this white back down. It's more of a yellow. Let me change it here. I'm just going to, since I got this in here and I've kind of already done a little bit. Kind of go in here and miss some of this on here and there. Should really reduce the thinness a little bit.
Yeah, this looks a little more yellow than it does orange. That's okay. It's pretty light effect. The great thing about these is that there's like, you know, you can look at the, it's kind of like the other animals, you just look at a reference and they're all different, so you don't have to be, they're all different looking, so. You don't have to be like 100% looking like what your reference. Again, I'm just using it for kind of color placement. So that was kind of, that was kind of yellow. Uh, I do have what is this gold toner? Let's see what this looks like. This is GarageKids.us gold toner. This is kind of a transparent. Let me see what this looks like. Actually, that might be perfect for what I want to do. Okay. So I got some gold toner here from GarageKids.us. Because this has got like a little, a bunch of yeah. So it's transparent. So I gotta be careful. I missed on some of the gold toner. I'm gonna kind of shift everything. What I want to do is knock down this white a little bit, just so it's kind of underneath the surface. Because it's looking a little stripy to me. So this is going to kind of knock that down a little bit. Sorry, it's hard to see what I'm doing because this thing rotates and gets out of frame as I turn it. Should probably turn this upside down a little bit and do some more. And then I'll come back. Alright, so what I have in my airbrush now is uh, GarageKits.us Transparent Vivid Orange number 410. And I'm adding some shading to the body here. It's pretty subtle. Oops, yeah, went a little too, went too heavy too fast there. Got to build it up real slow, it's transparent, so you just can't hose it on. So I'm going to do this, and I'll come back and show you what I got. Okay, so what I've been doing for the past 
15 20 minutes i'm going back in with my transparent scar red and adding some just adding to the shadows again and we're starting to get to where i want so i kind of abandoned the whole idea of doing like the white stripey thing because um i didn't like the way i was looking so i'm just kind of going in and blending in um that in a little bit with this so it does give us some tonal variation i just wasn't liking it so um I'm just going in and again just bring out the shapes of everything kind of darkening these lower areas I'm using that first orange I spray to kind of my mid-tone Looking pretty good though. I'm getting there. It's kind of hard to see until you flat coat it because it's looking a little shiny right now. Once I seal it, this will all kind of come together. We've got some nice kind of oranges going on. This red is actually kind of adding a little bit of brown tone to it. Looking good. Real lightly, kind of building this up. I did mist over that uh, vivid orange over the whole thing too. I'll probably do that one more time just to kind of help tie it all together. I think it's looking pretty good. It looks really good on camera. Yeah, I'm digging it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, I'm going to add some shadows around all these little spiky things. That's going to take a little while. I may go in with a different color on that. A slightly darker color just so that I can build it up a little quicker. Oops, way too much paint right there. So what I do is I just go in and I dab it off. I got a damp Q-tip and I just dab it. If I wipe it, then I'll wipe off the paint. It looks weird. If you dab it, it doesn't uh, it doesn't hurt it. it. Just picks up the excess that you just kind of put on. I do it again. So yeah, it's looking good. I'm gonna continue doing this. Um, it's always once you get the eyes in, it kind of brings it to life. I'll go look at some references for that. So, um, yeah, I think it's looking pretty good. You can still see that kind of white undertone I did here and there, so that, that does add some tonal variation, which is nice. It's just not exactly what my reference looks like, which is fine. Again, it's just an idea to give me some color placement. So uh, I'm going to switch colors, and I'm going to um, let's see what color I'm going to use. I think I'm going to use. I've got some. I don't know. Black, red, that may be too dark. Yeah, I don't want that. That's got purple in it. I don't want to add purple to this. Let's see what I got. I got a um, wound red. I like the reds. The wound red may be purple too. Let's see. Yeah, that's purple. Let's see what else I got. Oil, nope. 
I need to order some more transparent blood colors. I'm almost out. <laughs> this might work. I'm gonna test it down here on one one down low. So I think I'm just going to stick with the transparent um, uh, scar rex. It's got a little bit of orange in it. And I'm just going to build up these shadows around some of these spikes. So it's going to take a little bit of time because we got to do each one individually. And I'm turn my air pressure down low. Got some uh, yeah. blend it down a little bit. Sure, you're seeing that, but I'm adding a little shadow. The base of these the little spiky things. Like that and just on and blend it down. I just want to do that to all these and then we'll come back. Okay, so I've got going on now is I took some of my original rust orange and I've added a little bit of transparent, semi-transparent bone white. And just hitting some of these highlights a little bit. Just very, very lightly. I mean, super subtle. These little pops, these little spikes. The battery's about to die, so let's make Stop recording here in a second, but come in here and hit the top of these little spikes a little bit. Again, very, very subtle. I'm just about got this where I want, I think. So I've decided to kind of go back to the, um, not the, the reference I was looking at with all the white specks and everything. I decided not to use that. Stay away from the white stripey things and all those white speckles because this is looking really good the way it's, uh, it's turning out. So lots of nice tones, nice red, reddish orange color to it. Hit some very subtle highlights on the head here.
eye a little bit. I'm going to do this and then I'm going to seal it and I'll look at it when, uh, after I seal it. Okay, so after sealing it, this is what we look like and uh, the sealer really brings out all the shading very nicely, I think. Or, uh, one second, I'm just going to be cleaning up here a little bit. So I think I'm pretty happy with this overall. Now looking at the eye, I looked up reference for the eyes and again the eyeballs are just black. So <coughs> I think I'm just going to do that, just paint them black, gloss them. But what I'm going to do now is, since I've got this healed and I can see the shading a little bit more, I'm actually going to go in and darken the shadows just a little bit more. Um, I want a little more pop to this guy. So I'm going to go back in with my uh, scar red and just lightly hit some of these shadows again. I want to give everything a little more shape. Um, I was looking at pictures of the production paint, and they did a golden, like a gold color, and it was pretty flat. That's one thing I didn't like about it. The color wasn't bad. I didn't like how flat it was. And that's the thing about production paint, is that it's usually relatively flat. Um, they're not going in here and spending three or four hours like I have just working on the shading but that's what you pay for when you get when you have a custom paint done you're paying for the time that goes into it so but I, I'm really digging this yeah the head looks awesome really like the head I'm just going in here real quick. I'm just kind of just just accentuating some of the shapes again. base coat the eyes and I'll seal everything again and we'll, the last step will be to gloss the eyes mm -mm. It's a little dark in camera but I got my actually yeah, that's pretty, pretty spot on what it looks like good let's get a lot of dry tip when I shade with the garage kit paints and acrylic so it dries pretty quick super quick. I have everything established pretty well. I just want to do a little bit more. So after this I'm going to do the crab. And uh, I'm going to do it red I think. The burnt red. Okay. I think that 
that's looking pretty good. Okay, for the eyes, do a quick little base coat of black. coats of cover. Get this in my lap so I can actually see what I'm doing. I'm trying to show you what I'm doing, but hard to paint. So I'm going to base coat these, seal it, and then uh, we'll look, it should be done, and I'll gloss coat the eyes, and we'll look at it when it's done. Alrighty, so I just got done uh, gloss coating the eyes, and we're going to call the seahorse done. And I'm really happy with them, looks good. <clears throat> kind of deviated from my initial plan, but, <coughs> excuse me, that's how things work. I really like the color, I love the shading. He's got to dry a little bit, and I'll take him off this mount and put them on the statue. I think we're gonna continue this work in progress with the crab, <clears throat> since this one didn't take too long. It took me about five hours to paint the seahorse. So we're gonna move on and do the crab. So let me put him to the side so he doesn't get damaged while he dries. And we're gonna work on the crab. All right, so the crab, going to kind of do like a rusty red so I take these guys off let's see I'm not sure what kind of crab this is not a hermit crab sitting around so much. Alrighty, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint the his claws and, sh and uh, his body and then we'll um, paint the shell. So we gotta do the the, um, the crab part before we do the shell part. So for this I want to do I'm gonna base coat them with this medium rust I think. Let me clean out my airbrush. Here, real quick. And then we'll craft painting today. So I get these two painted today. Then that just leaves the dragon. The dragon will take me, I'm estimating, two days to get done. Um, the mouth alone will take me the better part of the day. It's got teeth and all that stuff. And that, just takes, it's very time consuming. Just picking my airbrush here from doing the seahorse real quick. Just gave these airbrushes a good clean this morning. Okay, so we're going to base coat this Garage Kiss US Medium Rust.
maybe a little dark, but that's okay, because I want to do some dry brushing on this guy. Kind of look like different colors of crab. They're all over the place. I'm not sure what kind of crab this is. I had a hard time. The only kind of crab I could find that looked like this was a hermit crab. I don't think this is a hermit crab. Um, that that had a shell like this. Thinking this is kind of like uh, crusty crab from SpongeBob. We're gonna do them in a red tone. Alright, so we're going to continue the base coat, and I'm done base coating, I'll come back, this takes a few minutes. Okay, so this is kind of the look I'm going for. All I can find are hermit crabs, so I'm assuming this guy's a hermit crab in the conch shell. So we're going for this kind of this bright red, I'll dry brush the little white spots on them and stuff. So I base coated them in this, um, this rust color. I'm going to let this dry a good bit because I have a lot of paint on here. And then I'm going to seal it, because I think we're going to sponge on um, some reds to get some different textures. Um, and tonal, tonal variations um, and then once I'm done with that I'll go in and shade the the joints are a little actually lighter in the joints not darker which is kind of interesting it's the exact opposite of what you think it would be um, and then um, we'll go for there so once this is sealed we'll come back and we'll we'll put some red sponge some reds on and do some more airbrushing okay so now we're going to um, get some red on the crab and we're gonna do what I always do, and I'm just gonna play around until I get something that I like. So we're gonna focus. Okay. So I didn't seal them, I just let them dry. Um, so we're gonna get some reds. What do I got here? Do some sponging, do some airbrushing, and all sorts of fun stuff. I'll probably do the little light areas with some uh, pastels. So I'm gonna get out, <coughs> excuse me, just the palette. Some reds going here. What I got here. This is tomato red. And instead of sponging, I think I'll use this. I'll use a brush. We'll stipple this on with a brush. And this being crap paint, it's gonna. It's not gonna cover very well, but that's okay. It's kind of what we want. We want to see all this stuff underneath it. I'm just using a full strength. I just put the seahorse on the uh, base and he looks freaking 
really good next to the the whale and the shark and the swordfish so um, this is coming together very very nicely so far this whole piece so to get the crab done today tomorrow's New Year's Eve I don't think we have any plans we never have any plans it's supposed to rain all day um, I took the kids to Six Flags yesterday because we have season passes and because of COVID they've extended our 2020 season passes all the way through 2021 so um, I planned on taking them back to Six Flags again because it was just me and my just me and the kids my wife didn't go so we had planned on going again tomorrow um, because they're only allowing so many people in so you have to make a reservation to go and it was like there was like no one there um, it, was, it was really nice there's like the lines were, I think the longest we waited for a ride was maybe 45 minutes, which is nothing. And um, the only re reason we waited that long is because it started to sprinkle. And they shut the ride down a little bit, maybe 10, 15 minutes. And then once the, the rain stopped, they opened it back up. So anyway, back to this. So we're just going to sponge on some different reds. On top of this rust color, this will dry down and get darker. But then we're going in and we do some dry brushing. If we get these two creatures done today, that's a really good day. I was gonna paint yesterday, but I decided to take the kids to six like it was a really nice, it was a beautiful day here. It was like the high was like 60 degrees. Um, for the most part, it was really pretty. It just rained for about 10, 15 minutes, and then it stopped, and then it was great. So. Here's a good day to, to do that and just kind of get out and have some fun. Okay, so this is looking good. Well, you can see that. I'll probably tear up this brush. It's a brand new brush, but it's okay. They're cheap. I got half off. that to the side let that dry and we'll do the claws same thing This one I'll be able to show you more of what I'm doing because this piece is much more is much easier to handle than the seahorse was. Uh, the sea dragon that's going to be a tough one to, to show a lot because uh, I am going to leave the head separate from the body and I'm going to ship it that way. I'm going to I'll probably glue it on at the end because it came together, but um, they weren't it wasn't attached very well at the factory, so which is a great because it'll make painting much easier to handle so I'll, I'll paint the head and the body separately so maybe I'll be able to show more <clears throat> of my process on that guy too so in the factory paint the crab that they painted the crab more like the color I did the the seahorse more of an orange and uh, again depends on your reference I'm looking at kind of a red hermit crab um, I just think it'll be a nice tone to have going on there. Make sure I'm using the same red. And once this dries, I won't I won't seal it. I'll just go right back on top of it with another red. Maybe like a wet on wet technique. Yeah, actually wet on wet, but it'll be a It'll help it'll activate this paint a little bit and it'll give us an interesting look. Okay, so 
I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit. Cause we got all that sponged on. And we'll come back with maybe a slightly brighter red. And maybe I'll sponge that on instead of using a, um, a brush. It'll give us a different texture, different pattern on the shell. So once it dries, we'll come back and do that. Okay, well, it's recording. Well, I thought it was recording, but I always forget to hit the record button. So I'm trying something here because I think it might look cool. I'm taking some orange um, and I'm sponging it on. And I think, the, obviously, he's not going to be, I don't want orange because I got, I want red. But I think this will add some nice undertone um, variation to the shell. So even though this is a bright orange, when I put this on, it's going to be pretty, pretty um, muted. By the base color so I just think this might kind of look cool to do this so that's why I'm doing it because why not right Let's see what this does Come on, dab it off. The hard part is getting this in to where I can't get my finger so I take a I'll take my sponge on a on some uh the hell you call these <laughs> I can't think of the name of this thing right now my brain is fried and then I go in here and kind of get into the areas I can't get in there Again, this is not going to be orange. I'm just want to add a, another tone to this, so it's just not all red. It'll look red, but this will just be an undertone. I always say I spend a lot of time what goes underneath. What, what goes underneath the main color because it has a huge effect on the final appearance of something so it's important to spend that time on the undertones it is as it is the final color looking pretty good. Tweezers. God dang it, I can't think of the name of those. <laughs> What's this tool? It's the tweezers. <laughs> oh man, sometimes my brain just stops working. <laughs> it's like, what the hell is these fucking things called? Tweezers. Dumbass. <laughs> you use them all the fucking time. Oh man. I'll tell you what. I wonder how I make it through the day most of the time. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Again, I'm just gonna, I'll airbrush on top of this, but give me some tonal variation. I'll do the, these claws.
Again, I didn't seal these. I'm just going right on top of the, the red paint. It's actually still wet in a few areas, but it's okay. Well, it's kind of helped it blend together a little better. Expose the white and bright. heavy on this claw that's okay. I'll we'll just do the same thing on the other claw. Same match. Right, and then I will seal, seal these after this step. And for everyone who's going to ask me, it's Krylon flat. Just the Krylon flat. Uh, I get it at Lowe's here. Uh, my Walmart used to carry it, but they stopped carrying Krylon, which has really sucked. Um, I just go to, I go to Lowe's and get it. Yeah, we're a little too heavy right there on this guy. We'll see. I didn't take enough paint off before I started sponging. It's alright. It's a crab. It's not perfect. And this will dry down quite a bit anyway. back and do this one a little bit more since I kind of went overboard on that guy. I kind of add more. It's easy to add more than it is to take it off. Alright. Doesn't look like much right now. It's kind of messy. That's okay. Alright, so we're going to let this dry really good for a few minutes. Oops. And I'm going to seal them. Up there, let's do a little bit on this side since I kind of did that. I wanted to go put some more in here, I have a little too much. That's okay, I'll just brighten up the top part a little bit. All right, it'll be brighter on top anyway. All right, let this dry, we'll seal them, and then we'll do some. Uh, Probably some airbrushing, so I'll come back when I'm ready for that. Okay, I'm gonna try something. I didn't seal these yet, but when I have my airbrush, so I mixed up some of this uh, True Red uh, craft paint. Got that in my airbrush. I'm gonna just back off and mist this on. It's a pretty bright red. And since this is craft paint and it's it's tricky to airbrush, we're gonna. Well, it was spraying just a second ago, and of course it starts spraying as soon as I record. Need more water. A little more water in here. Should have mixed it in my airbrush. I should have mixed it in a cup. Right. right now, let's see if I want to spray once I record.
is what I want to do now after this. Then I'll seal this, and then I'm gonna go dry brush the red on top of this and bring out all the details. That's looking pretty good. It's a little dark right now. I don't want this dark. But it's looking pretty good so far. pretty good. That orange kind of has a cool little texture underneath this paint that I'm spraying on. It's pretty subtle. You probably can't see it in camera, but I can see it. It's kind of neat. I like it. It should dry pretty quick. Um, this craft paint is mostly water. That looks good. Let this dry, we'll seal it and do, the, do some dry brushing when we come back. Alright, so what I'm doing now is I mix up this kind of beige, this warm beige color, and I'm kind of going, I'm dry brushing everything right now. So it's lightening up everything quite a bit, which is fine because I want this to, again to be an undertone for when I go out. I'm going to do some airbrushing here in a minute, and we're going to do some shading and stuff. So this should be the last little bit of undertoning I do. But this is bringing out all the details in the shells and stuff, see? So it brings it up, all those highlights. And then I'm going to come in here, I'm going to airbrush some transparency. shading I'm done with this dry brushing, I'll seal it again. And we'll break out some transparent red. See if I can go here and do the right here under the claws because this is actually in the joints. It's actually it's actually brighter in this area. I can kind of go in there and do that now too. I'm gonna have to go back in there and do that again one more time. Maybe with some pastels or something. Let's 
sent pictures of the seahorse to my client. He loves it. Good. Again, this is going to be looking messy for a while until I start tightening things up. Sometimes when I'm painting something, I'm like, man, this looks, this is not going the way I want. This, look, this is going south. I gotta remember, I got like 20 more steps to go. That's why I don't like to send like uh, work in progress photos while I'm painting to a client because they don't, they can't see in my, they can't read my mind and see what I see after I do all the steps. So, I'll, like if I send a picture of it, of it right now, they'd be like, well, I get so many questions like, are you gonna fix this? And like, yes, <laughs> I'll get to it. <laughs> Uh, I'm on step one of step 20, so or step three of step 20. Don't worry, it's gonna get there. Okay. Join some of these guys. Again, the picture I'm looking at is just kind of a reference for color placement. I'm not trying to match the colors exactly. Just trying to. Get a sense of where things are supposed to go. good we're gonna go seal these and then we'll come back and we'll do some dry brushing or some uh, airbrush with the red all right what I'm doing now is I'm airbrushing on mr. color number 108 character red I've got this over thinned quite a bit and there's lightly missing this on I don't want to lose the stuff I've done before I just want to kind of again bury it and blend things together a little bit Missing this on real light.
can see I'm trying to avoid getting paint up in those joints as much as possible. I'm going to go back and do it again with some pastels probably. Not exactly the color I want, but it does add just a little bit of shading and shape to things. Pretty good. I'm not gonna see this at all. I'll be standing on it, but I'm gonna make sure I do it. And I'm gonna clean out my airbrush. And I'm gonna go on with some of that transparent red I was using earlier. Let me do this real quick. should really have a separate airbrush for lacquers and a separate one for acrylics because I switch between them quite a bit. After I do the lacquer thinner, I put a little bit of water in there and just kind of uh, spray it through to kind of help burn out the lacquer thinner. Okay, so I got, I got um, Scar Red. Let's see what this, I think this is what I want to use again. It's the same red I used on the, um, Seahorse. <clears throat> Turn my air pressure down. I had it jacked up for um, craft paint. Yeah, we're not going to see this down here, but we're going to do it anyway. need to look at my reference, because I think it's actually, the shell's actually darker on top. <clears throat> if I go with that reference... Just going in and the shadows where <clears throat> shadows should be. And just doing a real light because this will cool really quick.
see what I'm doing here. In this guy. <clears throat> I was looking flat there for a little while. Again, my reference really isn't this exact same type of crab. Uh, I'm looking at a hermit crab, <clears throat> which um, is actually quite a bit different from this, but. It's all right, I'm gonna use it anyway. I like this uh, <clears throat> transparent wreck because it's got a little bit of orange in it. Hopefully you can see where I'm adding the color, barely to the sides here. Excuse me. It's a pretty subtle difference. It may go in with a, a little darker tone. This is starting to look pretty good.
Turn it like something. Let's take these guys. Hopefully you can see there's just some shading in there. I'm not sure. I'm sure my camera's focusing on the towel because it's got text on it. Too much on there. Take it off. Okay, I'm gonna come in here with. Um, I didn't use it the last time. I think we're gonna use a little bit here. Red, black. Actually, let's do wound red. This has got a little bit of purple in it. I'm going to add it to my scar red. I got a darker shadow tone. Are real, real light. Too much. It's real watery. That uh, uh, scar red is very watery. It's much thinner. Hitting the real deep recesses with this pretty hard. And anywhere where I just want to add a little more shape. 
pretty subtly. Use a little creative license here and there. I'm going to darken the tips of these claws a little bit. It's starting to look pretty good, I think. I'm getting there. The red's almost there. I'm almost happy with it. Almost happy. Again, I just I play around with colors until I get the look I want. Usually I think I know what I'm going to do, and then I start to do it, and it's not working, so then I go try something else. Good. I think after I get this step done, I'll seal it again. Because I wanted to do some um, very selective dry brushing on the. They got these little, um, what do you call them, little spikes on them. And uh, they're actually pretty bright. Hear my airbrush kind of spitting. Okay. I think the red looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to seal these and then I think I'll do. Um, some pastel work in the joints and then I'll seal it again and then I'll do some dry brushing on the spiky things technical term spiky things um, and then that probably be pretty close to being done then I gotta do the shell My back is getting stiff. Oh, there's a hair in there. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Nice shading. It'd be hard. To, it's hard to see now. But once I seal it, it'll it'll pop. I can see it pretty good. I'm doing a quick 
missed over. Doing good. Same thing here, so. Very light dust of this color to bring it all together. And I'm, and I'm out of this color, so perfect timing. So we'll seal these and then um, we'll do some pastel work on the, um, on the joints. Okay, so I sealed everything. Um, I've got on uh, some 800 grit sandpaper here. I didn't have in the, uh, my pan pastels or uh, my make pastels a color I wanted to use for these joints. So I used my stick pastels, and this is just called ochre, and it's kind of a yellowish tan. And we're gonna come in here, and this sealer may not be dry all the way. That's okay. I'm, we're gonna come in here with this, and we're just gonna dab it into these joints A damn Q-tip here to get any excess off. I don't want. Now these stick pastels I use. Once you seal them, you lose quite a bit of the effect. That's just part of being a cheaper pastel. But in this case, it's okay, because I want this to be subtle. <sighs> so I kind of like that look. Oils, this would be good. Uh, oils would be good on this too. If you, had, if you want to do oils. <laughs> these aren't sticking very good. That's another thing about these stick pastels. They don't stick as well as a pan pastel or a MIG pastel. They're just... <laughs> thing about the MIG like the MIG pastels and pan pastels, there's more pigment in them. Or <laughs> these stick pastels don't have it, unless you buy really, really high-end stick pastels. These are Hobby Lobby, cheapy ones. <laughs> um, there's not quite as much pigment in them. So that's why when you go to seal it, you kind of lose some of the effect. Like I said, in this case, that's okay. I just want this a subtle look to it. I think I'm happy with the red. <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> Remember we did a little bit of this before with that tan I'd mixed up when I dry brushed. <laughs> Some of this is already there.
talking because there's not much to say. I'm just doing the same thing over and over again. So once I get this done, we'll seal it again, and then I'll do that little bit of dry brushing. And then I think, hopefully, the red will be done. I'll do the eyes at the very end, because those will get glossed. Okay. You're just lighting up those joints a little bit. Again, it's going to be pretty subtle once I seal it, that's okay. I'll give it a nice effect. <laughs> Alright, we're going to go seal this, and then uh, we'll come back. Okay, so the last step I'm doing on here is I mixed up, I used kind of that same tan I did when I bright dry brushed the first time. And I add a little bit of red and orange and a little bit of white to it. And I'm very, very carefully, <clears throat> just with the side of my brush, not sure it's focused, just going in here super, super light. Because I really don't want to affect the overall red. I just want to hit the tops of these little spiky things. So I'm just going here super, super light. And just adding a little bit of a highlight on those to bring out those details, just like this. here and I'll show you a comparison between um, with and without the dry brushing with the other one but it's very light I'm not going over the whole thing like I did before just hitting the tops these little spiky parts on the shell You know, just with the flat part of the brush. So this one has it. So the left has that little bit of dry brushing, the right one doesn't. It's a little, slight little difference, that's a little more detail. So I'll do this to the rest of it and then we'll seal the red and then the red will be done and then I'll uh, silly putty off the red and we'll do the shell. The shell should be pretty simple. I kind of have an idea what I want to do. It's going to be a pearl uh, finish when I'm done. So I'm gonna continue doing this, and then I'll seal this, and then I'll slowly put this. Up, I'll slowly put up the shell to do the shell. Come back when that's ready. All right, on to the shell. So I slowly put it off, <clears throat> sprayed a layer of gray on top of it to get rid of the red, and could uh, keep it pretty simple, I think. Um, and do like a pearlescent look to it. I just gotta get the base color down. I thought I had. I, Maybe I threw them away, but I could have sworn I had a set of pearlescent or trans, uh, what do they call it? It's like a pearl, a pearl set from Garage Kids US. I don't know what happened to them. Um, I have bought them years ago. I don't know where they are. Oh, they're right here. Oh my gosh, iridescent. 
here we go. <laughs> like, I haven't used them. There's iridescent blue, red. It's like, I know I had these. It's the one place I didn't look. Gold, white, and purple. So, I've never used these before. So, I'm not sure if these are opaque or not. I'm going to try iridescent white first. You gotta shake them up. I've never used them. <clears throat> so, like I said, I'm not sure if these are opaque or these are translucent colors. But they're iridescent, so they should have a little bit of a metallic sheen to them. Yeah. Okay, so this is like a transparent color. But it does give a really cool sheen to it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and spray this, even though it's not going to be the right color. Because I don't want it gray. Most of the shells I saw were kind of cream colored. Uh, so we're going to kind of go with that. Okay. Let's go and use this up. I'll just keep spraying this. It actually looks kind of cool on top of the gray. It almost looks, it looks kind of silver. But I don't want silver. See what happens if I just keep building this up. It looks like a transparent. Yeah, basically it's like a transparent, and since I did it over gray, I basically got like a silver. So what I'm going to do, because I don't want silver, is I'm going to put down a layer of, I've got this color, it's called dirt. Uh, where'd it go? Or dust. I thought I had one called dirt. That was more... Uh, where'd it go? Oh, sand. Got dust, I got sand. I don't want mud. Sea gray. Alright, well, let's try this. Let's try, let's try dust. I need to get myself one of those vortex shakers. It's like you push it on there and it uh, shakes the paint up. Actually, sand may be the right color. Go with in with this, and I do some shading. Sand, garage kiss that US sand. It's maybe a little dark. I'll try it out. Kind of missed it on there.
sand makes sense because it'd be like a good camouflage color on the bottom of the ocean. So that actually makes sense for a color. some more of this on and then we'll let it dry really well and then we're going to do some shading and then we'll mist on the iridescent white on top of it which will brighten it up a little bit and give it the pearlescent look Alright, this looks pretty good. So we're going to let this dry for a little bit. And then I'm going to come in with, um, where is it? I don't want black. I don't want black green. Uh, i got oil somewhere, I think. Be transparent. Lavender purple. Actually, I might go in with some browns. I'm going to let this dry and we'll come back. Okay, so I got some transparent oil in here. It's not exactly the color I wanted, but I started started using it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick little shading with this, and then I'm gonna go back in with uh, a brown of some sort because this is it's got green in it. I forgot that oil has green in it, and I don't want green in this. So we're gonna go ahead and do it anyway since I got it already in here. Basically, I'm just adding shape to the shell. I like the little twisty thing in pattern in it. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour that out. It's a waste of paint, but it's not doing what I want. And I think I want to go in there with um. I don't want gold toner. What? I don't know. Let's look at gold. Let's see what gold does. Let me read what I want. I may have to... Actually, that's what I'm going to do real quick. I'm going to mist on some sand real quick just to kind of knock that back a little bit. It's not exactly what I wanted. I'll have to take it all the way down just a little bit. Now what we're going to do, you can still see the shading there, it's still there a little bit. To this sand, I'm going to add a little bit of brown, transparent brown, I think. Let's do, um, burnt sienna. Some more of this too. All right, so I just add some transparent burnt sienna to the sand that I have in my airbrush. Let's see if it does what I wanted to do. Mm, not really. It's not as dark as I thought it would be. 
Alright, again, since I got this in here, let's do it. And then I'll add a different color. I mean, it's there a little bit, but I want it more. Or rich brown, maybe? I want to um, put some shading around all these little bumps, too, like I did on the seahorse. Okay, so I added some rich brown to that. There we go. That's what I want. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Now, hopefully, I got enough in here to um, go around these little bumps. I got a rich brown. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to go around these little bumps. Dry tip. I'm going to take the needle guard off so I can get the dry tip. There we go. Just a little shadow around these guys. You can see what I'm doing.
And then we're going to go back and mist on some semi-transparent white on this, I think. Hit the little tops of these. Basically going to be like a, a one-tone, like a two-tone color on this shell. I'm not going to go super crazy with colors on it. Got some little ones here. I'm just gonna hit real lightly. Oops. Too much. Of course, I don't have a Q-tip when I need it. Get in there. this spiral again and make it darker than I want I'm going to mist some transparent white on this I'm going to hit the highlights and then mist it on Damn dry tip. Okay. Looks pretty good. I'm going to kind of connect these dots a little bit, add a little more pattern to this.
a little bit right here. Just hitting all the low spots. Up under here. Transparent bone white. I don't want pure white. Okay, so I'm going to hit very lightly. Ah, poop. I just spattered on it. Hit the high spots first, real light. Give this guy kind of a striped pattern. I got that going on. Looking pretty good. Now I'm going to very lightly mist this on, I think. Just kind of knock it all down a little bit. I go back in there a little bit. Yeah, it's looking good. It's nice and subtle. I'll make the highlights a little bit brighter, Let's hit them again. Pretty good. Kind of nice tan. Went back and added some rich brown back to that white.
come back and hit some of my shadows again. I just have the rich brown to the semi-transparent white that I have my airbrush. Just stay in the same kind of tonal range, just a shadow color. Yeah, I think I'm about, about ready to do the iridescent white. too high so it's uh pooling much faster than it normally does okay all right that's looking pretty good i think it's pretty much what i had in my head what i had in my head the shell and i'm going to throw on iridescent white just real lightly get a little machine So I'm going to seal this with um, Krylon satin and it'll dry to a nice uh, semi gloss look to it with a little pearlescent finish. Alright, so I can go do that and let this dry for a few minutes and then I can go seal with the satin and then I'll take the silly putty off and see how many brush touch ups underneath the shell. Hopefully I don't. Um, and then the last step will be to gloss the eyes. So I'm going to let this dry, hit it with the satin, let that dry and then take the silly putty off and I'll show you what it looks like when uh, I get done with that. Alright, took the silly putty off, lost the eyes, and Mr. Crab is done, and he looks super cool. So, really happy with that. And that's the end of this work in progress. So, we got the seahorse, and we got the crab done today. Really good day. So, um, tomorrow I'll start on the um, sea dragon. Uh, probably work on the mouth first, because I gotta get that done and masked, and then we'll go from there. But yeah, he looks really cute. So, happy with that. Uh, so, stay tuned for the next work in progress. As always, thanks for watching. This is Matt Mrozik. Catch you guys next time. Bye.